Greetings, my name is Ryan Nixch. I am a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Xiao Zhen from Red Hat. Xiao Zhen, say hi. Hi, I'm a Red Hat Managed Service Black Belt. Uh, Xiao Zhen, working with uh, customers on OpenShift, I'm seeing a lot of customers move towards a managed OpenShift, so a lot of adoption around the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS Rosa. Uh, jointly supported, managed by Red Hat, so real benefit there. I want to spend a little bit of time looking at two of the implementations. What does it look like specifically for Red Hat SREs to manage that ROSA environment when customers are deploying ROSA into a public facing architecture, where the entire Ro uh, OpenShift cluster is public facing? And then what does that look like when we shift that into a private link where everything is private? How do the SREs uh, come in from that perspective? Shall we spend a, a moment or two and look at the public facing implementation first, what it looks like, what its building blocks have, and then how the SREs come into that environment? Yeah, sure. So if you look at here, we, we basically draw a rows of cluster, say that uh, a private subnet. And inside of this VPC, you have a private subnet, you have a public subnet. And uh, uh, on the public subnet, you have an uh, elastic load balancer. And this subnet attached with a, a IGW Internet Gateway and a NAT Gateway. So, so you, this is this is a, a very traditional yeah. AWS VPC. You've got an internet gateway in that public subnet. The NAT is to cater for uh, communication from the public to the private and vice versa. Yeah. This is an internet-facing AWS load balancer. Yes, that's an internet-facing yeah. um, el uh, elastic load balancer. The, the OpenShift cluster itself, the control plane, the infrastructure nodes, the worker nodes, they're all here inside the private subnet. There's nothing in those. Uh, public subnets. Exactly. E except for the load balancer yeah. itself. Yeah, the load balancer is basically in front of the road uh, uh, API, right? Cluster API. And, um, you know, that's where the SRE actually get access uh, from the ingress point to the ROSA cluster. And in this case, it's hitting the, the cluster. This is the same OpenShift API that I would talk to if I was using uh, CLI tools like yes. OC commands or my ROSA commands itself. Yes. Um, where are the SREs? They're sitting inside Red Hat, inside a separate AWS account. Is that correct? Yeah. That's, that's a, a SRE basically have their own AWS account and um, it's a separate AWS account. So, so they're coming in, in this case, they're coming in over the internet. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that is, uh, from a security standpoint, filtering that only SRE is coming in? Is there something like an allow list or? Yeah, there's an IP uh, list. It's only IP allow list to allow uh, the SRE, uh, uh, SRE account from Red Hat to manage this uh, Rosa cluster. And, and they're coming through into this load balancer, which in turn gets to the OpenShift control plane. This API, that's on the master nodes. Yes. On, on the OpenShift yeah, cluster. Yeah, they forward the traffic to the master node of the Rosa cluster. Now, with Rosa public implementations, the API endpoint, the OpenShift console, those are accessible to the outside world. Most customers I work with want a, a much more private implementation and they gravitate towards ROSA private link. But this makes everything private. It's, it's literally it's exposed to the VPC that it's deployed in. So if I have a customer who is on-prem, they're probably going to have something like AWS Direct Connect or they're going to have a transit gateway to have the communication from their internal organization to this cluster. That doesn't help the SRE team. Yeah. How, how does the SRE team get into this if there is nothing connecting them to that, that public space? Yes, uh, so there's a feature called uh, um, Interface VPC Endpoint.
this is essentially a private link endpoint, but uh, yeah. we're not linking to another AWS service here like we traditionally would with private link. This yep. is, uh, I'm assuming we're going to have the SRE team here have their own AWS account, yep. and this is a link to yep. that AWS account. Um, so once the interface uh, uh, VPC endpoints create, um, the customer they have to approve um, this access for certain AWS account. Um, that's just a permission, which is eventually the AWS um, SRE service account, and then that account actually is the only account able to um, route the traffic to the interface VPC endpoint, and everything inside of that traffic is private. It's inside of a AWS uh, infrastructure, not through the internet. This is a private connection. Everything here is still private. What stops an SRE member from being able to come across here into this ROSA AWS account and then taking the next step to come all the way on yeah. premises? Yeah. Um, so this is more like ingress traffic, right? And um, you know, you can definitely have like your security rule on the transition gateway or, um, you know, uh, security group or ACL to block the traffic. So this is only about SRE access to the ELB and then the ELB has the traffic to the Rosa cluster. Okay, yeah. so we've got a security group here that is defining only these address spaces can come in there. It, there's nothing that it, it allows that to transfer further through the environment. The Clusters are private, but there's nothing stopping a customer from taking a private ROSA cluster and then presenting that to the outside world through uh, another security device like a Palo Alto or, or a WAC no. implementation. Yep. So we do see customers using this uh, private link implementation to have internal workloads, but also to provide a centralized secure mechanism uh, to expose that externally. Yeah. Of these two, which of these two are you seeing as the most common implementation? Yeah, enterprise customer, they are not comfortable to expose their um, uh, API, uh, cluster API to the internet, of course, right? And uh, even though we have IP list, so private link is definitely like the most popular way to implement your Rosa cluster. So where are we seeing public? These are smaller implementations where there is a, a, a need to expose it publicly, I want something simple, or it's a potentially non-production context? Yeah, I would say non-production context, or um, it's not a like critical secure application. And um, for the private link, is uh, you, you can also expose your, uh, your application to public, but you just don't expose um, the API to the public. Okay, and this private link is only to the Red Hat SRE teams. It's not general to, to Red Hat in itself. It's yeah. literally just the teams that are mandated to manage this environment. Exactly. The monitoring, logging, the telemetry from the OpenShift environment, is that crossing over this as well? No, this is more like an ingress. Okay, yeah. as you said, it's ingress. So this mm -hmm. is really uh, the OpenShift clusters communicating back to things like yeah. OCM, for example, and if they need to take action, they're gonna come in on this path. Yeah. Uh, there is a audit process and change control when SRE teams need to utilize this path. Yeah, there are like different kind of like escalation path, right? So um, the SRE internally, they have to have um, internal tickets to escalate so they can access to this uh, internal VPC, uh, in, in, interface VPC endpoint. Yep. Alright, uh, Shaojin, thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And thank you for joining us.